Mystic Ashram Channel presents Astrology, Sabian Symbols, Solar Eclipse, December 26, 2019 at 3.01 a.m. Mountain Standard Time or 11.01 Greenwich Mean Time. Astrological Sabian Symbol Visions through Medium L.C. Wheeler channeled in 1925. These are Madame Wheeler's visions as translated and transcribed by Mark Edmund Jones, providing a forecast based on 360 degrees of a chart or map of the sky at a specific time and place. A chubby boy on a hobby horse is an image of a child playing with a toy horse. Hobby horse refers both to a stick with a horse's head and a rocking horse. By extension, anything that was a favorite pastime of amusement became one's hobby, one's preoccupation, or favorite topic for conversation. A chubby boy is an overweight boy, thick and round, well-fed. A horse is a symbol of power. Placing the head of a horse on a stick gives one an, the idea of power. The hobby horse derives from the traditional English Morris dance performed during May Day pageants, celebrating the return of the green man and the verdant season of growth. Apply this degree pair with a mind to a creative ease that trims away the old and celebrates the new. The sense of getting hold of one's power, having a happy read of one's situation. Watch for crowning achievements one by one's own hand. Personal touches, the height of personal amusement, or matters coming into hand. One might be going back and forth over the same ground, or obsessing over the refinement of a singular pursuit. Consider the rocking horse winner imagining victory until it is a reality. Equine affinities, the rocking motions of procreation, swaying back and forth, phallic symbols, emerging sexual awareness, palmistry, a fascination with the care of the hands and nails, a knack for imagining what is true, rehearsing things over and over, cheerfully going back and forth while refining one's position in the world, optimism, sharing success with others easily. A teacher of chemistry is an image of one who imparts knowledge regarding the inner structure, composition, and transformative properties of a substance. A teacher is one who instructs, trains by practice, or imparts knowledge of deeper principles. In Eastern traditions, the teacher is one who points the way, who transmits the foundations of knowledge, but is not himself the divine reality. Chemistry is the science that investigates the inner workings and properties of substances. Teaching may seek to transmit a health doctrine or to encourage and guide inquiry into deeper, as yet not fully known, areas of knowledge. Apply this degree pair with a mind to the twofold truths regarding masks, highlighting features for effect, covering over more profound realities. Be aware of maintaining a show of a fragment of the personality as a whole for security or defensive purposes or for affecting deception. Think of dominating principles or beliefs that stifle creativity as opposed to having the right chemistry which reveals deeper realities. Consider the wisdom of hiding one's true face in a potentially dangerous situation, showing who you really are after getting to know someone, after becoming comfortable with prevailing conditions, masquerade as a creative expression of the delight and joy, or a hollow means to fuel the fires of deception, a tendency to seek or attempt to maintain the right chemistry in relationships. The lamp of physical enlightenment in the left temple is an image of being guided by an illumination, an ideal sense of physical reality. 
Imagine getting up in the night and walking into an object in the darkness. In that moment, a flash of enlightenment blazes through the experience of physical pain, turns on the lamp, so to speak. One might be very sleepy, stumbling on a path that in the light of day would never be taken. A felt experience can evoke pathos, suffering, which motivates thought for a pragmatic and realistic course in the future. One may have empathy for the plight of others, Knights Templar, who protected pilgrims on their way to Jerusalem, were given quarters on the site of Solomon's Temple. The temple is a name for the seat of the Knights Templar in London. Mount Temple in Jerusalem is said to be the other of two main sacred sites. All that is left of the temple, said to hold the Ark of the Covenant, is the Wailing Wall, surely a symbol of the great pathos. The left temple of the head may refer to the irrational, analytical function of the brain. Although the left side ever refers to the feminine, creative, receptive capacities of the mind and body, intense emotional experiences may bewilder or lead to an ability to separate emotional involvement from the cool head of assessment. Physical enlightenment can come from stubbing one's toe on a material object. Kickability is a very pragmatic way to determine what is real. Shining a light on the matter literally makes one's steps easier to take. Apply this degree pair with a mind to physical manifestations that evoke empathy and insight. Watch for new ways to understand personal, emotional, spiritual, and physical reality. Taking the path to the left may literally illumine many things. Walking the path less traveled, being brainy at the body's expense. Physical well-being in accordance with one's philosophical leanings. The clumsy professor. Consider sudden shifts in one's path of life. Poetic sensibilities born out of trust. Pragmatic applications for effective purposes. Belief in fact or belief in faith. Idealizing the everyday. A water sprite is an image of a spirit with an affinity for water. Water is a necessity of life. It is symbolically and often naturally a clear liquid. A sprite is a disembodied spirit that is one that casts no shadow. Often associated with elves and fairies, a sprite can be a fanciful product of the imagination or an invisible, if almost tangible, sense of spirit, esprit de corps. Water sprites are also water nymphs, naiads, nereids, and oceanids. Feminine divinities often associate with youth and enticing beauty. A water nymph can allure hapless young men to their doom or affect a mania of the same name. The story of Hylas and the water nymphs is a case in point. Hylas left his traveling party to fill a jug of water from a nearby spring inhabited by water nymphs. He did not return. It is not known whether he went to his death or to his ecstasy. Satisfaction that surpasses the limits of reason is a divine ecstasy. When luxury is ecstatic, it is extravagance wandering outside normal limits or beyond moderation. Luxuries, since they are beyond the necessities of life, can be indulgent and rare, and usually come with a cost. One comes to learn that the deluxe model comes with all the unnecessary bells and whistles, really more than you need. In a spiritual or sexual sense, Ecstatic bliss is without blame. Still, it is a delicate point. Spiritually pure or excessively indulgent, does spirit cast a shadow? Ultimately, such questions turn upon how one reads the situation. 
Apply this degree pair with a mind to the inclination to recline in contentment as opposed to a sprightly or spirited manner, extravagant layabout as opposed to a quick and agile nature. Watch for quick learners, the insensible apprehension of spirits, a fascination with the perils of ecstasy, happiness or hapless fortune. Look for alluring qualities, a penchant for divans, low, long, armless sofas, rooms used for councils, smoking and drinking, reading and writing poetry, poetry of spiritual or sexual ecstasy. A woods rich in autumn coloring is an image of the splendid display of fall colors, a time of year when fully matured plant life begins to decay. The colors are rich and there is a special air about the season. The season's beauty is in, an, in abundance. Even while signaling the approaching winter, one can smell the season of decay while walking in autumn woods. The leaves crunch and rustle as the trees release their foliage, signaling a time of degeneration out of which a new green phase of the life cycle will eventually emerge. Autumn leaves also announce an impending time when the trees will be stripped bare, fully exposed. The animals of the woods will have less protective cover, their movement betrayed by rustling falling leaves. Apply this degree pair with a mind to airing things, past secrets, old and moldy items or ideas, opening a window of consciousness to a wider experience, dusting off what has been collected and is just hanging around. Think of connections to paper, thin leaves of linen for paper making, folios, folded leaves of paper, books, printing, watch for enhancement skills, a knack for showing something or someone up for who and what they really are. Consider a nose for a story, opening the book on some dirty secrets, feeling the need to catch something new, information that just falls your way. Spring cleaning, stories then on details, being left holding the bag, a bag of nerves, a tell-all nature, expose, the bare facts, an attitude of que sera, sera. A party entering a large canoe is an image of a group of people boarding a primitive vessel carved or fashioned out of wood. While canoes are admired for their capacity to move swiftly and gracefully through the water, they are also notoriously unstable, especially when loaded with many passengers. A party can be a group of people or a symbol of a shared philosophy or common sense of purpose as in a party platform, a social gathering for fun. Issues can be divided along party lines, sometimes even when everyone is in the same boat. Apply this degree pair with a mind to the challenge to find one's place between the instinctive animal urges and the sublime natures of being human, calling for order while entering an unstable circumstance, having to patiently fit in, wait one's turn, watch for penetrating scents that trigger instinctive responses, entering into debates along party lines, rationalizations of all kinds, but especially those that smell fishy. Think of sexual politics, the politics of sexuality, divine creation versus down and dirty. Look for hidden motives, 
Beneath the artifice of well-reasoned positions, caterwauling, and little peeps, positions that rock the boat, consider the shrewd ability of knowing when to pounce, a tipsy manner of reasoning, quick corrective changes in direction of thought, strategy and movement, the thrill of the hunt, not rocking the boat. A hidden choir singing is an image of many voices raised in song, but hidden from view. To be hidden is to be out of sight. Usually associated with church music and cathedrals, there is a suggestion of celestial sublime music in celebration of divine love. A chorus is a group singing in unison. Often choirs lift their voices together out of view from the gathered assembly. Perhaps one can hear a choir rehearsing in passing. Singing in unison while in visual seclusion is suggestive of a cloistered choir. Cloistered choir meets roisterous street song. Imagine the many instances of hidden voices singing in unison after a big sporting match. Home team revelers stream through the streets intoxicated with joy while singing this team song. One might awaken to an exalted love song that seems very much like sweet dreaming. One might have a sense of a choir of angels whose sublime singing uplifts the spirit. A siren song can cause ruin. Odysseus had his crew put wax in their ears to prevent them from being wrecked on the rocky shores while he himself was lashed to the mast of the boat so he could hear the irresistible song. Consider the confidence of voice while singing in a shower under the assumption that no one can hear, or singing in a boisterous group where the quality of one's own voice is no longer an issue, therefore an uninhibited vocalizing of joyful song. There is a Confucian dictum that goes something like this, while alone act as if you are in the presence of others, while with others act as if you are alone. Apply this degree pair with a mind to the hidden alluring powers of sublime singing. Think of the blissful joys and destructive potentials of intoxicating reveries and revelries, alluring temptations that promise comfort and joy, sirens singing sweetly, or sounding an alarm to head for hidden shelters. Think of floating along propelled only by something or someone standing behind, out of view of a church choir hidden above the nave, of roguish knaves roisterously singing below your window. Consider songs of the nave, of any jack might sing, but also sublime voices and songs of unearthly beauty, a genius to hear the music in all things, to make even the everyday and the ordinary sound good. Steps up to a lawn blooming with clover is an image of a gradual approach to the atmosphere of a situation. Steps are a gradual progression of movement, usually of a short distance. Step down is a gradual decrease, as in converting the current of a voltage to a lower voltage, as opposed to stepping the current up. A lawn blooming with clover is a pa good pasture in luxuriant or prosperous condition. Clover is a flowering ground cover with a sweet smell and associated with luck, a four-leafed clover. Clove is an aromatic spice that, like cloves of garlic, cloves of garlic can really punch up a meal.
to cleave something is to split into or penetrate like a pungent smell, reeking of garlic or aromatically and pleasantly spiced. Blooming is blossoming, suggesting a thriving, flourishing, unfolding of life. As a slang term, one might refer to a blooming fool or intensify a matter as in, ask me no blooming questions, I'll tell you no blooming lies. Apply this degree pair with a mind to the efforts to maintain a gradual uplifting harmony, to steady a situation through accommodation rising up to gradually realizing what has been seen. Watch for strong community ties, a patient flair for lifting a lawn into a garden of blooms, extending help to keep the peace. Look for a quiet and innate sense of natural order, natural hierarchy in one's expression and work. Consider elevating relationship, bringing something to a higher level, a tolerance for working with others, a natural willingness to help despite lingering issues, a sense of natural development as opposed to engineering social realities, working like a busy bee. An Easter promenade is an image of exhibiting oneself at a controlled pace within a social event inspired by feeling renewed or reborn. Easter is a Christian celebration of rebirth and a time associated with the arousing, renewing energies of spring. A promenade is a casual stroll in an open social space. The promenade is a at a walking pot pace the word deriving from the Latin promenare to drive cattle forward. On a beautiful Easter Sunday afternoon, all walks of life come together dressed in their Sunday best. Rich and poor stroll along the promenade, casually enjoying the return of spring, watching and greeting one another. Apply this degree pair with a mind to a sharp awareness of the appropriate expression of powerful inspirations, the urge to run furiously while everyone else strolls along, the potentially destructive forces of creativity. Think of demeanors that are hot within, cool without, explosive tempers just below the surface, cathartic eruptions that might rain on the parade of others. Be alert to the social capacities of acceptance and tolerance being tested by new, raw, explosive social expressions. Consider flare-ups of all kinds, boils, tempers, defiance, molten energies that flow with a mind of their own, take solid form only after long periods of cooling down, as opposed to the natural pace at which everyone shows themselves, their position and power in a promenade. A general accepting defeat gracefully is an image of a display of admirable character acting in harmony with the prevailing winds. Grace applies to movement as a harmony of motion and is distinguished from beauty, which applies more to appearance. Defeat is to fail, to accomplish, to be vanquished, to frustrate victory of one's purpose, to try or to attempt something ever admits of possible greater powers that lie in reserve to overcome human attempts. It may be maintained that to say, I am, is nobler than I tried, but the exultant glory of the moment of victory still bears a questionable transience when held up to a noble and graceful defeat. Apply this degree pair with a mind to nobility of character, grand and fitting gestures, longing strengthened by divine influence. Watch for awareness of greater powers, 
patience for appropriate timing, knowing when to step down, regenerative capacities in the face of apparent defeat. Consider graceful movements, picking up a scent, respect for the winds of fortune, for one's lot in life. Lachesis, the second sister of fate who measures the thread of life, being in the doldrums. Graciousness in defeat is a hallmark of greatness of character. To be defeated by a power far greater than oneself, the longing for love, the power of might, is a victory of the inner spirit, not an achievement for public applause, but that with which every human spirit needs to wrestle in order to know their own invulnerable dignity. A tiny nude miss reaching in the water for a fish is an image of guileless innocence attempting to grasp what is elusive. A tiny nude miss is a young unmarried girl or woman without any clothing suggesting one without guise. Reaching in the water for a fish is an act that attempts to grasp what is slippery. Getting a hold on a fish is especially difficult since the actual position of the fish is distorted by the refraction of light as it passes from the element of air into water. The fish is not where it appears to be. Fishing for something, a compliment, the truth, is an attempt to find indirectly what one seeks. A Roman fable tells of truth and falsehood bathing. Falsehood came out of the water first and dressed herself up in truth's garments. Unwilling to wear the clothes of falsehood left behind, truth went naked. Nudus veritas. Apply this degree pair to with a mind to the challenge of innocently reaching into realms of powerful potentials, of discriminating between sublime messages and pointed barbs. Look for tiny pointed instruments, stringed instruments, angelic affinities, a tendency to harp on about something. Watch for naked honesty and the refusal to wear falsehood's clothes. Consider triangular shapes, clouds of confusion, attempts to shroud the truth that miss, lyrical voices or sensibilities. What you seize upon may be sublime good fortune or a storm cloud with which you are carried away. Mm -hmm.